Welcome everybody to the very first episode of School of Super Adobe. My name is Hayden and I'll be your instructor for this entire course and we're here today to begin learning how to build a Super Adobe Dome. This is episode one of course one and I've just launched this brand new platform which all centers around the website schoolofsuperadobe.com. If you haven't already, head over there and sign up to our mailing list to get email updates on all our new courses. But let's get into it. Now, anything expressed or explained in these classes is for education only, and I cannot take any responsibility for anyone using or misusing any information that I might share. You must take full responsibility for your own building if you choose to do any in the real world. Because domes, they can be very dangerous as they can easily collapse with poor building techniques, with the wrong fill material or heavy rains before plastering. And these buildings can weigh in excess of 10, 20 or 30 tons and are therefore very dangerous if they collapse. So please take this warning seriously and only move ahead if your understanding is sound and your building practice is confident. Now, earth bag is an umbrella term which includes three distinct and very different techniques. Single earth bag, super adobe, and hyper adobe. Now, single earth bag uses individual bags, often recycled from used grain sacks, laid like bricks. And super adobe uses long uncut rolls of closed weave bag material. And hyper adobe uses long uncut open mesh bags. Single earth bag and super adobe both use barbed wire between each layer, but hyper adobe does not. And all systems have their benefits and their drawbacks and they all fall under the compressed earth family. I'll go into more details about this later as the course progresses, um, but for now, we're just gonna be focusing on super adobe for the remainder of this course. To be clear, you can also build a dome following the exact same geometry and chain system out of single earth bags, but currently I haven't seen enough hyper adobe domes be successfully built and tested to be able to say with confidence that you can build uh, a dome with hyper adobe following the exact same system. So the hyper adobe system has inherent differences to the other two earth bag systems which make it potentially unsafe to build a dome in exactly the same way. Super Adobe is a technique pioneered and invented by Nada Khalili at his research campus in California called Cal Earth. And I was lucky enough to study there and attend their three month apprentice program in early 2014. Therefore, I've just hit my 10 year anniversary of living and breathing this work. Firstly, I'll be taking you through how the geometry of the dome is achieved using two chains as compasses. I'll utilize this model here to express it clearly and I'll share a few rules to follow to make sure you build safely. But first, a few terms, figures and processes. So Super Adobe is long uncut polypropylene bags or sacks, cut to the desired length of your wall and then filled with damp, on-site site soil, laid in place, compassed and then tamped. Then a layer of barbed wire is laced onto the bag to hold the next layer onto it. This process is then repeated over and over with the rows closing in as they eventually join at the apex of your dome. Now there's many sizes of bags throughout the world, but they all follow these basic increments, which are 250 mil, 300, 350 mil, 400, 450, 500, and 550, or 10 inch, 12 inch, 14 inch, 16, 18, 20, and 22. The last numbers on that list, which is 550 mil or 22 inch, is the largest bags a person can comfortably physically lay, which is why I stopped there. 
Now, these are purchased unfilled bag measurements. And here are four common sized bags and what they fill out to and tamp to. So your final wall width from an initial bag dimension. So a 550 mil or a 22 inch bag becomes approximately 450 wide by 150 tall, which is 18 by six. And a 450 mil bag or 16 inch becomes approximately 385 by 135 millimeters, which is 15 and a quarter by five and a half inches. And 350 mil or 14 inch becomes approximately 305 by 105 millimeters or 12 by four. And a 250 mil or a 10 inch becomes approximately 210 by 85 or eight by three. That's heaps of numbers. <laughs> Okay, now some geometry terms. Diameter is the distance from one internal wall across your center and to the other internal wall. Radius is exactly half of that, from your center to any area of your internal wall. Now, wall width or wall diameter is how wide your final filled and tamped super adobe or earth bag or hyper adobe wall is. These measurements are important to understand for our first general rule. Your finished wall width must not fall below 10% of your internal diameter. So for example, a four meter diameter dome, the wall width must not fall below 10% of our diameter. So 10% of four meters or 4,000 millimeters is 400 millimeters. An easy way to figure this out is to take your internal diameter, 4,000, and multiply it by 0 0.1. So 4,000 times 0 0.1 equals 400. In Imperial though, you first need to convert it into inches. So a 14 foot diameter dome, which is very similar to a four meter dome. So a 14 foot dome is 14 times 12 inches. That equals 168 inches. So same thing, 168 times 0 0.1, and that equals 16.8 inches, which we can reduce down and just call 16 inches. So therefore, your finished wall width must not fall below 16 inches. This is a great beginning rule to follow, but it can be pushed to nine or 8% if you're an experienced builder with great fill material that's a good moisturization and possibly stabilized, and you're going at a steady pace while building. But it's not recommended for early builders to go down to nine or 8% because the risk of collapse is much higher. The reason for this 10% rule is to make certain that our bags up in this section don't come in too much and approach the tipping point of the bag where they want to fall inward while you're building. It's quite scary. If the bag is too small and if the bag diameter is too small, there won't be enough of the bag resting on the layer below it and it'll be prone to falling in. So the danger zone is in this top third of the dome where the bags are coming in the most. All domes built in this way are based off two compasses made out of chains predominantly. These are called the fixed compass and the center compass. Both rely on each other, but play completely different roles. These roles are 
the fixed compass passes from the external wall through a doorway or an opening and over the center of the dome and terminates on the opposite internal wall. Its job is to present the information of how much each bag should come inward each row to achieve the lancet arch form. It is called the fixed compass because it never ever changes. It's valid only directly above the center compass, therefore is only valid in two dimensions, which is no good for three-dimensional people. The fixed compass is kept above the center point by eye or with the use of a plumb bob. The center compass's role is to take the information that the fixed compass presents to us and brings it into the third dimension by rotating all the way around the dome to show us exactly where that layer should land. This is done by using a chain and a small easy to unhook clip which allows us to quickly and easily adjust the center compass to mimic the information of the fixed compass at the beginning of every row. Make sure you choose a chain which is both strong and has small links to allow the most accuracy with each new layer adjustment. Another concept that I'll introduce is something called the spring line. And that is when this fixed compass first begins its journey and first begins its job of telling us where the bags need to come in, when it's completely horizontal in this first starting position, that line is called the spring line because it's where this arch actually springs forth from and actually begins. And in this model, the finished floor height of our dome and the external ground level of our workspace or our, our site all three of those are the same level and the same plane. So the spring line, the internal dome floor finish level, and the external ground level, they're all on the same plane, but they can all be on three different planes. And I'll explain more about that when I actually draw this dome in two dimensions in the next episode. But I just wanted to introduce you to this concept of the spring line. It is where the arch springs forth and actually begins from. Thank you everybody for tuning in to the very first episode of School of Super Adobe. Well done. And I'd love you to head to schoolofsuperadobe.com and sign up to our mailing list so that we can shoot you emails directly of when new episodes are released. I'd really, really want to be getting out one a week and I'd love to be able to have a really clear form of communication with everybody who's interested in this. I'd also love a follow and a like on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube and TikTok all under School of Super Adobe. So I'll see you online and yeah, peace, love and bag baby, yes! Bye-bye! <laughs>